So yeah, changing the subject, as you can see that the Nurgle mat is no longer on the table. I wanted to put this up online for whatever reason. Has that ever happened to you that you're into Yugi and then uh, you find a card that just keep on pulling over and over and over and over and over and over again and you, you have too many of? Uh... I don't know about you, but over here, it's called one of two things. Jank or chaff. And, uh, what do we do with all these useless copies that we basically can't do anything with because we either no longer play Yugi or have too many copies of. So, usually legal limit is three, so what are you going to do with the rest? Well, I kind of figured out a solution for that. You're going to need 11 cards that you're willing to part with and some tape. But not just any tape. You need this type of tape. Because this is transparent packing tape. Even though it's thin, the reason I use this and not scotch tape is because this one does not tear in a straight line down the middle. Scotch tape has a tendency to rip exactly straight. That's why they use it for wrapping presents and whatever. This one, not so much. This one won't necessarily rip unless there's a nick in the tape. And you're going to get 11 Yugi cards that you have no attachment to. Like I did with these 11. These, well, not 11 yet. These 7 cards. And then these sets of 2. Right? And there's this very specific reason why you tape them in this pattern. You need seven in a row, just like the wallet pictures that people keep, right? And just so you can see, they're all basically useless cards. Nobody in their right mind will put any of these in a deck. Or these. Whatever. And you're going to tape them in this specific way. You're going to put them face to face like this, and then you're going to tape them along the seam. The reason you're going to do that is because you need them to have slack so that they bend. If you tape them exactly like this and you try lifting it up, you'll have a solid piece of cardboard from one end to the other. But yeah, you don't really want that. You're going to take this, these seven cards here, and after you tape them long end to long end, you're going to do this and make a figure eight. Get it? You're going to tape this end here, and this end here, and you're going to make this figure eight. Right? And then you are going to take these two lids, and after the figure eight is done, you're going to tape this end here, and this end here, on both sides. That's why there's two lids. So this would end up like this. No, there's a specific reason why you want them to end up like this. This is going to fall apart, but don't worry about that. I thought in advance. I'm going to tape them in that formation, and that's going to end up something like this. The reason I have it marked out with Sharpie is because that's where the tapes go. And you hold it like this. You pull the flaps out, and you make... A pop-up box. But there's a specific reason why you make a pop-up box in this formation, right? After you get this here pop-up box and after you do the tapes and everything and you make sure that it'll stay up, maybe you want to weigh it down with some washers or something that's a little heavier so that it's completely flat, but I didn't really particularly think about it necessary. You make this, that's where all the tapes go, and then you grab it and you get yourself some foamy and after you get yourself some foamy it's gonna look something like this same thing you're gonna pull it open these things are sturdy by the way here we go pull it open and it's going to look like that a uh, little black box with two barriers.
right? Same thing. Except that that one looks a little thicker because it has foamy all over it. And the foamy gives it substance. It makes it look bigger and thicker, whatever you want to call it. Well, then after it's covered in foamy, you're going to get yourself your best friend, your ballpoint pen. And then you're going to start marking some lines on it. The funny thing about foamy is that you get a ballpoint pen, and let's say that you want to do... Uh, can't really do it in, in midair. Put it down on the table and then grab your straight edge of choice and then you're going to mark it and go over it a couple of times. And that will leave an impression on the foamy, right? I did think about this impression is that it does not really go away. It'll stay in the foamy like that, especially if you dig into it a couple of times really good with this here ballpoint pen. Then you're going to take your pen and you're going to click the ink into it and you're going to do these rivets. These rivets are nothing more than just taking the ballpoint pen, pressing it into the foamy and spinning the foamy around. And that will leave the rivets marked on these plates. I don't know if you can see that. The camera picks it up just fine. These already have it. And... Same deal, right? Now, you can do variations on that because I have thought about this too. You can get plastic canvas and do uh, cyclone fencing. And do edges and do rivets and whatever. And then after that, you get your spray paint of choice and give it a nice coat of a base color, black usually, so that you cover up all of the sections that have exposed Yugi material on them, right? And it no longer looks like it has Yugi material, and you can give it, a, you know, a couple colors or whatever. And after you go through all the trouble of doing all the rivets and the cyclone fencing and all the edges and whatever, you're going to have something that ends up looking like this. And this is the finished product. This is a modular foamy cardboard and tape piece of terrain for your slightly newer vice which is tabletop miniature wargaming so you can have your your miniatures your your very tediously painted handcrafted models you can have them with it and this is made just with yugi cards tape and a little bit of foamy and some paint and elbow grease and would you look at that the entire squad can sit on the cards and it does not bend it does not buckle the good thing is that it's modular it can be put anywhere on the table as long as nobody th swings their hands or whatever it should work just fine not only that it also works out that the way that these cards are positioned and whatever, you could take multiples of these and stack them one on top of the other to make multi-layered terrain. Look at this. Just like Lego bricks. You can put them one on top of the other and they work just fine. Look at that. And they do not buckle under the pressure. You can go up higher than this. Look at that. Everybody's on the box. You don't trust the weight. Let's try with this. No buckling. No nothing. And this is not a particularly light puzzle. This thing's pretty hard. And... After you assemble it and paint it and make it look as pretty as you want, right? After it's done, the best part about this terrain is that it folds flat. So you could have a large amount of these in a shoebox stacked in the corner of your bedroom or whatever, on the shelf or something. You got 
There is one, two, three, four, five. There's five pieces in here, and this takes up no more space than a book on a shelf. Think of the possibilities. What you, what, how much of a table could you cover with these if they are stackable? Not only are they stackable half and half, you could stack these directly one on top of the other. Just like Lego bricks. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I need a tower. You make a tower just fine. And, same story. Everybody can get on this here tower. Uh, the tower doesn't bend. The tower's just fine. So, yeah. You got a whole bunch of chaff you want to get rid of? You got a whole bunch of repeated Yugi cards that you don't really have a purpose for? There you go. Get into wargaming and make terrain.